Captivating. Possibilities. Collaborative. Collaboration. Positive and optimistic. Expanding. Pure life. I'm Celine Diaris, and I'm the host of Regenerative Voices, Elevating Stories, Activating Change. Our first podcast is going to share a, a talk that the CEO and President Rose Macario of Patagonia gave at our Regenerative Earth Summit this past December. One of the exciting and profound things about Patagonia is their incredible leadership on driving change in business, both on the food side and on the apparel side. Patagonia has actually changed its mission statement to say that they are in the business, they are in business to save our planet. Patagonia also in this recent tax cut in the United States has pledged to give the $10 million that they received in tax benefits out to organizations that are serving the welfare of our communities and our planet. Rose Macario will be speaking about the urgency that is before us, that business has to act and that business must lead. We as citizen consumers, as I am excited to say in our Regenerative Voices programming, are going to be given insights about how we become part of that web of custody. The choices that we each make on a daily basis have a huge potential to change the paradigm that we are all living inside of. So I hope that you will listen carefully to her call for collaboration, transparency, and urgency as we join forces across industries, which is what our organization strives to do in creating these convenings for leaders, we are silo busters. We want different communities of practice to be engaging with one another, inspiring one another, and holding each other to account. I think that we are standing before an extraordinary opportunity to create the future we all agree we truly want. Dystopic visions of a horrible future are seemingly commonplace. But it is our contention that most of us want a beautiful and verdant and healthy world for our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, and seven generations forward and beyond. So listen to Rose Macario, CEO and President of Patagonia, as she invites us all to up our game and be a part of the solution. All right. Hi, everyone. Good morning. I don't have a podium, so, uh, but I do have notes. So. Um, I just want to start by saying how great it is to have uh, food and fiber here today. That is rad. Um, <laughs> our friends from Eileen Fisher are here and Fiber Shed and just so many great brands. Um, you know, this is, uh, this is like a pioneering moment. You know, we, we really are pioneers here. And we need a regenerative revolution. We need it because we're killing the planet right now. Sorry to bum you out. This is information you already know. <laughs> Read the climate assessment. And it's really important that we come together as a group in our diverse ways, uh, either through our food supply chains, there's farmers here, there's ranchers here. Um, as a brand, Patagonia came to Regenerative Organic through a standard because we're a brand that sells product. And we really felt that our customers didn't understand the climate crisis um, through the agriculture that we're doing. And, you know, 20 years ago, we pioneered organic uh, cotton. And about four or five years ago, our founder said, you know, organic isn't enough. We need to be building soil. You know, you can farm organically and it might not be good. Yes, there'll be less, no pesticides and, 
and no um, synthetic fertilizers, but there'll also be, um, you know, basically problems if it's, if it's not farmed in a way that's building soil. And we know that soil is just an important part of the interconnection of air and water and soil. And, you know, if we don't do these things, we're not going to have a world to live in. <laughs> and we sat looking at the tax cut from the administration and said, wow, we're going to have $10 million more cash this year. And we decided we're going to give that to grassroots activism, <coughs> to regenerative organic supply chains, um, to standing up organizations that are working um, to build a better world. Um, of the $600 billion that corporations have used to buy back their own stock, which I think is an embarrassment, it's a national embarrassment when we have the kind of climate crisis that we have. It's, it's sick and demented, if you, if you want to know what I think. And I'm a former CFO. <laughs> you know, we have to act now. And we have to act with urgency. And, you know, we got, we got a, um, some flack for putting together the regenerative organic certification so quickly. We're doing a pilot right now. There are 200 uh, organic cotton farmers in India, smallholder farms, that are piloting the standard. There are multiple companies, brands, farmers. Um, we've made the standard public. <laughs> we have to have transparency right now. It's really important. Um, the climate crisis is real. It's here. It's not a forecast anymore. I mean, I, I can say that personally. Last year, about this time, the Thomas fire was raging through uh, Ventura County, which is where our office is. And I was um, in my house in Santa Barbara at the time. Uh, snow, uh, ash was raining down like snow all around me. We had more than 75% of our employees evacuated. And across my intermittent Wi-Fi came uh, the lawsuit where we're suing the Trump administration on public lands. And all these things are related. You know, if we give up public lands, we give up sequestered carbon. If we give up forests, we give up sequestered carbon. If we don't act now and act boldly, then we give up the planet. You know, do we want to tell our grandchildren and our children, well, we waited. You know, I don't want to tell my grandchildren, and I don't have any grandchildren, honestly, but <laughs> I think of your grandchildren as my grandchildren. <laughs> but I do work in an office where we, where we provide on-site childcare, and I see the future every day. I walk into my office. I see the kids of my employees, they're there, and, and I think, what are we doing? We're not acting fast enough. We're not acting urgently enough. So whatever way you come up the mountain, whether it's transitional organic, whether it's going into an ROC pilot, whether it's just coming to this conference and talking and learning and bringing it back to your work, it's something. But I would, I would just say that just, just one other thing. You know, half of the rivers um, and the streams in the U.S. are polluted. Many of them don't have biological life anymore. We're just watching it happen before our very eyes. We have to do something. And I think we're going to do it with three things. We're going to do it with collaboration. Brands need to collaborate. Farmers need to collaborate. You know, the days of like, I'm going to do my thing over here and then have a marketing launch, it's over. If you wait, you're making us all wait. And, and that's why we made ROC really transparent. But I think all of us have to make our work more transparent and we have to collaborate more. So brands need to collaborate. Um, you know, we've been talking to a lot of apparel brands that have been saying, okay, how can we do more? How can we collaborate? And food brands, I think it's really important. It's the only way we're going to scale, and it's the only way we're going to win. And um, I think the other important part is transparency. 
You know, we need transparency. When you think about seed being owned by, I think it's only seven companies or something like that, the majority of the world's seed, it's, it's horrible. <laughs> I mean, we need diversity. Nature needs diversity to grow, <laughs> you know? And so we need diverse supply chains. We need diverse ecosystems. And regenerative organic is part of that. It's part of building healthy ecosystems. You know, we don't, we live in an interconnected world. Anyone who tells you we don't is wrong. It's, they're just wrong. We live in an interconnected world. And so if you're selling off land to be fracked for fossil fuels, there's a consequence to that. And, you know, that supply, that, that water figure I gave you about rivers, I mean, that's, that has to do with runoff from agriculture. That has to do with destruction of access to public lands and open space. Um, that has to do with uh, hydraulic fracturing and other contaminants that are going into the water. I mean, we can't, we can't let the world go on our watch. And the next 20 to 25 years are going to be the most important. You know, the US is not even in the top 10, not even in the top 10 when it comes to green energy. It's sad. It's pathetic. We're a national, we're, we should be nationally embarrassed by that as a, as a, as a country. And we should, we should push our politicians to get involved in, you know, to, to get involved in these movements like regenerative, you know, regenerative organic or regenerative um, practices because the reality is the farm bill that we have is not serving us. The farm bill that we have is serving the old systems that don't work anymore. It's like fossil fuel. We could have been so far ahead on electric cars and, elect and green energy. We're not, because these old entrenched fossil fuel interests screwed us. We could have had a lot less people die of cancer because of phony science about the fact that <laughs> tobacco didn't cause cancer. I mean, we have to wake up that the climate change issue is a reality. It's a reality right now. So I talked about two things, collaboration, transparency, and the other thing is urgency. We have got to work faster. We have got to be faster. And I know that's hard to say in a corporate structure, and I run a company, and it's, it's hard to get people to change, but you've got to work harder at getting people to change and work with more urgency, or we're going to lose it. And I really believe that business actually has the power to be an incredible force for good in the world. And I think that all of you in this room, I hope, believe that. And we can make tremendous change. In fact, change happening from a small group of people who are really passionate is how change is made. It's how change is made. So I just want to encourage you to think about those three things, urgency, transparency, and what was the third one, because I'm getting old? Collaboration. <laughs> yeah. And it's really a different way, it's really a different way of working. So listen, um, there's nothing more important than this work. This is the only thing that really, along with adopting green energy and, and um, changing the way we do supply chains, it's the only thing that will work. And you know, it's hard work. We've been building regenerative supply chains, we've built organic supply chains, it's hard. It takes time. It's not gonna be done in six months or a year. But we have to start now. And, um, and you guys are representative of that, and you're the people who are going to carry it forward. So I would just say, go with courage. Think about different models of working and collaborating, because the old models don't work anymore. They're not going to be effective. And be transparent and open with your work. It's really important. We all need it right now. We need, we need to feed on great work that's being done in the field everywhere. So thank you for having me here. Um, I really appreciate it, and I hope you have a terrific conference. The Regenerative Voices Elevating Stories, Activating Change podcast series is produced by At the Epicenter, a 501c3 nonprofit organization. The podcast and video recordings are made possible by the generous support of people like you. 
make a tax-deductible donation or sign up as a monthly supporter by visiting at theepicenter.com slash donate. Support packages start at $1 per month. The podcast series is also sponsored by several corporate and organization sponsors. To become a podcast sponsor, visit at theepicenter.com slash contact to let us know of your interest. If you found this podcast episode insightful and meaningful, please pass it on by sharing it with a friend or colleague who will also enjoy it. Thank you for tuning in, for your support, and for activating change. Thank you.